Welcome back to the We Sell Restaurants show. Uh, I'd like to thank our guests from the, the previous two segments, the phenomenal information about uh, why buying a franchise restaurant. Uh, keep in mind that We Sell Restaurant operates the largest restaurant brokerage company in the nation based on number of listings, transaction count, and volume. We are franchising nationwide and have offices in Florida, Colorado, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Georgia. Robin, you heard the noise? Let's kick off the restaurant reality segment. Yeah, now let's talk about restaurant reality because, you know, we just heard three great panelists discuss buying a franchise, but I've heard you say, Eric, many times, buying a franchise isn't buying a life jacket. Why do you say that? That's right. I mean, people buy, you know, they think about uh, McDonald's. They think about legacy brand, McDonald's, Burger King, all these. They think they buy this, and they cannot fail. Well, that is not true. You can still fail if you do not believe, and we heard our panels today saying, you know, if you're not in love with the concept, you more likely will fail. We actually have a, a, a franchise rule of three that we reference in our book, Appetite for Acquisition, which is available online through our website in major bookstores nationwide and also at Amazon. Let's talk about the rule of three here. We tell franchise owners if you're going to go after a franchise resale, which Mike explained is an excellent way to enter the marketplace, what's one of those elements of the Absolutely. Mike said even he saved $400,000 on a build-out on that. The first rule is we try to be the third owner. Um, and that, Robin, can you tell us a bit more what we mean by that? Well, the first owner is that fellow that invested the $400,000 that Mike said. So he went through the process of actually burning up his capital on the deal. The second owner came in and thought he was going to make a fortune, but he realized after counting everything up at the end of the year and based on what he paid, that he'd barely made minimum wage. So he's ready to get out at a sacrifice sale. He comes to the restaurant brokers. We sell it, and that third guy, guess what, Eric? He's getting the deal on the restaurant. That's very good. That's a good strategy for those of you out there. Be on the lookout for that. Rule number two would be don't pay more than three times sale. Oops, I think I misstated that. It should have been three times times earnings. earnings. Yes, I was about to say that. (laughs) Uh, Sorry, sometimes our script doesn't uh, keep up with our mouths. Um, Yes, three times earnings is a a key rule for buying a franchise because that way you're not overpaying for the uh, earnings that you're going to take home every year. And the last one? Buy in the third year of operations. By the third year of operations, what we find as restaurant brokers is that that sales line has sort of uh, built up to the the degree that you're then able to um, flush through all that capital and all those expenses and everything else. And so it's actually um, beginning to return some pretty good profit to the bottom line. You start getting beyond that and you get to a very established franchise or one that's still growing and you might have to overpay to get it. So that's the restaurant broker's rule of three. Yeah, for th- those of you out there, you know, considering buying a franchise, you know, th- there's two key pieces here. You know, you have to be in love, but you have to be careful. When you're in love, you get very emotional, and you can make some business mistakes. So you have to have the love of the concept, but the business discipline to stay within the boundaries, not to overpay, and not to, you know, get overexcited on the business side and over- overlook the franchise disclosure document, uh, the, the, the structure of the, the, the franchisor. You know, we heard a panel talking about that today. So these are very important things that to have the love but also the discipline to make a, a good marriage of the two to have a successful franchise in the future. And I want to talk about reality when it comes to that franchise disclosure document. This is serious business. Federal law dictates that every single franchise will file by April 30th of each year their franchise disclosure document. And what happened to me this year, Eric? I had two sales go south because my buyers got cold feet because these franchisors were not buttoned up and did not have their franchise disclosure documents done. What's your favorite saying when it comes to buyers and sellers? Time is your enemy. Remember that, guys. Time is your enemy. Uh, And also, you talk about the culture and the people. If you have a franchisor out there that can't even meet a federal trade deadline, how are they going to be able to support you and help you? So that's also a, a, a good indicator, and maybe that's why these buyers walked away at the end of the day. But, again, you want to look for these documents. This is where the franchise disclosure document, which is also known as the FDD, it's the document that spells it all out for you. It's going to be all the information about the operation, about the risk, about the investment, about the reserve you should have. And also, at the towards the back end of it, it will have every single franchisee's name, address, and phone number. 
call them. Call a lot of them. Some of them will be very angry. Some of them will be very much in love with the concept. One question to follow with that, are you making a lot of money or a little money? Usually that goes along with their love for the, for the brand. So that's very important to understand that. All of this is great information and really does tie back to the idea of reality. And, you know, speaking of that, the reality of our business is that we do sell restaurants for a living. And we have several franchise restaurants for sale that you can find on our website. Here's a few examples of uh, restaurant resale. Consider, for example, a Backyard Burger. Backyard Burger franchise is a, a initial cost, in the, according to their FDD, would range from three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars to build out. We have two different backyard burgers for sale in the southeast. How much are they listed at, Eric? Believe it or not, ninety nine thousand dollars a piece. And these are company owned stores. So the company is focusing on supporting franchisees so they're letting go of their stores for a fraction of the cost. We're talking less than thirty cents on the dollar here, guys. That's a great opportunity. And also one thing you need to look at is the where is the franchisor in their life cycle? If you guys remember Applebee's in the late 80s, early 90s, it was the coolest place in town to go. And then late 90s, early 2000s, um, nobody was going there. Actually, there was a bunch of closed Applebee's available for their content. They spent a lot of money. They fixed it up. Now Applebee's is back on track. with They're, they're, they're generating some, some, some good earnings. So where each franchisee goes, there goes up and down. There is, is about a 15-year life cycle. So if you want to buy Burger King right now, it's a great buy because they're, they're coming back. But that's also going to mean you're going to have more uh, expenses to going forward to, to, to get your store up to compliance. I've got a great listing, uh, two different Witch Witch franchise restaurants for sale in Texas. Now, they're listed at $99,000 each. And based on what you said about life cycle, I love this brand because they are at the beginning of their life cycle. They're hip, they're cool. Everyone loves them, and this is a situation where a multi-unit owner just says, I'm carving these two out. They're beyond my scope of control. I can't get my regional managers over to that area I'm, I'm in other places in Texas, so they're letting them go for a song. Yeah, it's typically average cost is about $350,000 for a new store. But because the owner is not there, they're not pr producing the expectation. We heard from our panel today, be involved in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the location. So an owner-operator can go in there, very quickly adjust, and turn these stores into profitable locations. There are other restaurants, obviously, franchise resales. I, I can't even list them all. We have so many listings on our website, which is WeSellRestaurants.com. But you can check out uh, Woody's Barbecue in Central Florida, multiple Brewster's ice cream locations in the metro Atlanta area, multiple CC Pizza locations in South Florida. I've even got a Church's Chicken. I mean, everybody loves chicken in the South. And Church's Chickens for sale here in the metro Atlanta area listed at $375,000 with the real estate. That is a bargain, folks. So visit WeSellRestaurants.com for information about these and other listings that we would have available. Uh, that's going to be a wrap today for the Restaurant Broker Show this week. Remember, our name says it all. We sell restaurants. We will satisfy your appetite for acquisition, feed the need for restaurant reality, and serve up a recipe for business success. I hope you join us every Saturday at noon and catch up online during the week at WeSellRestaurants.com. Thanks to our guests again today for their participation in this week's show, and we appreciate you listening to the show, and we look forward to being with you again next weekend.